I shall be. <laughs> hello, everyone. Welcome to Awaken Hidden Truth. And hello, Scott. <laughs> Hi, Perry. Good to see you here. And I wonder how many of these, what we're calling radio shows, we've done in over the years. Quite a few hundred, I think. Maybe three. Yeah. A lot. And they do make a difference. They do reach people for their benefit in ways that it will take a while for some of the people who first cross paths with this work, but it will affect them in an uplifting, benevolent, kind, good way. And it's mostly about them having their own experience about the truth of this statement for themselves, not about what I say, about what they do and what they experience. So that's really what this work is about. It's also about <sighs> spearheading a great transformation for this world that people will not see coming. They're not prepared for it. They don't deserve it. They might think they do, but they don't. It's being given to them anyway because it's recognized by very advanced beings, not from this world. You call them master teachers if you like, but it's recognized by them that earth people have long been made to forget who they are, what they are, why they exist, what their purpose is, what their destiny is. And they don't even know they're not a body. They don't even know how they got here. It's God's will. We just woke up in an unconscious baby body and grew up with a personality, and now we're who we are. No. That is not how it happened. People don't originate and have one lifetime and go back to heaven. That is a training that's been put out by people who themselves are not experienced and keeps people stuck because they don't seek out or find ways to have real experience to remember and recover who they really are in eternity in the source beyond that's you know uh, what people call the supreme being there isn't actually a source many higher dimensions above the physical worlds people know of like earth that they originated from at some point long before this one kind of unconscious lifetime they're living here with amnesia meaning subconscious influences to keep them from afraid of knowing or remembering why they came here, what their purpose is creatively. Because the fact is, all beings running bodies on earth today from the most terrible person to the most sublime. They, they came into the lower worlds and incarnated in bodies to run human bodies to become a conscious co-creator with the source. Not its slave. You don't worship it. You respect it. Respect is love. Divine love is respect. That means respecting all life. People on earth don't respect all life. They don't really respect each other, most people. They don't respect animals, the atmosphere running animals. They don't respect mountains or water or trees or pollution or anything else, which means they're left to manifesting this world based on the fact that they're making decisions on subconscious fear. The outcome of that is always negative, each and every time, without exception. So for this world to change, and the reason I came to this planet, the only reason I came here was to help bring into reality something new that would help change all that for the first time. Not just on Earth, out in other planets and many parallel dimensions of the physical universe and into the upper realities from the top down from the bottom up. Something's changing in what people call divine spirit. They don't really know what that is. They're taught in faith to believe in it, pray to it, but they don't really have conscious experience about what it is and what they are that is like it. In other words, in current scientific terms, I suppose quantum physicists are the scientific spiritual way of looking at God and themselves, in that they consider themselves a quantum, like one spherical being, one atma, one soul, in a great quantum. 
This is accurate. Because that's really what we are. The individual being that people call soul without really knowing what that is either is an energy being. It's spherical. And it moves in an energy field like the one that's just outside the atmosphere of Earth. All that black area they see in a photograph from a Hubble telescope isn't black. And scientists on Earth today know that it isn't. They know that that is a field of energy, powerful. They don't know what it is. They know it's not atomic or nuclear. It's not DNA. It's not bodies. It's not molecules. It's not atoms. It's an energy that's behind and supporting those things. And it's one omnipresent energy that moves through all the levels of heaven, all the different dimensions, and supports everything. It is neutral. It is unbiased, non-prejudiced. It is a living conscious force. More advanced races out among the stars and other dimensions have learned how to work with it. So they're able to get around what people call the limits of the laws of physics. Because you have to work with that energy in a conscious way and know what you're doing to work with zero point or toroidal energy, the energy of the universe. So you can create electromagnetic fields around craft, which are toroidal fields around the craft, just like the earth has around it, that makes it float in this energy. You have to know what you're doing with that. The being itself is capable of not only moving in and out of body or running a body, but is capable of moving on that energy and the the limits of the speed of light as it's misdirectedly thought of as on earth because there is no limit to the speed of light or sound it's just higher and higher frequencies from a source there is no limit and if you know how to work with those different energies you can go across the galaxy in a matter of minutes there are some races that can do that and no they don't interact directly with earth people earth people are full of fear of almost everything the first impulse is to attack something they don't understand. This goes for the military industrial complex on this planet who have been making serious mistakes in judgment, presidents for decades, because the, all these leaders of this world are making their decisions based on fear of something outside themselves. And so they design everything to be in competitive nature. This is wrong. It's not the way most beings live out in the universe. So there's not much in the reaction most of those beings can have with such people, dangerous, destructive people that Earth people are. They don't take care of animals. They don't take care of their nature. They're not custodians or caretakers of the world. They're supposed to be. They're not acting this way. They're not behaving this way toward each other. Religions don't get along. Politics don't get along. This is all illusion. It's created from fear and only from fear. It's the only thing that distorts reality and keeps people from remembering who they are, fear. It is an artificially created emotion implanted in people that goes back in a history people cannot remember in galactic and interdimensional history. It's a real history, and they were part of it, but they are afraid to remember it because it either got them in trouble or got their body killed. It creates a kind of a subconscious program of I don't want to do that again, even if it wasn't their fault. So they, the more people do that, the more they begin to re forget or not want to remember the higher faculties they have as an individual being that they've lost, that are now suppressed in what we call the subconscious mind. It just means there's stuff going on, they're influencing people that they aren't aware of. That's kind of sad because it means that their lives are being subconsciously manipulated to make decisions based on fear, which are always, in every time, destructive or result in destructive behavior. It's what we see on Earth today. And people on Earth, including the leaders of this planet, even the hidden government of this planet, what we call the military-industrial complex, for lack of a better term. Many of them are waking up right now. They're changing their view of things because some of them have had contact with extraterrestrials and kept it classified away from the rest of mankind here. And it's changed them, and it is changing them. They're still very much afraid. And yet, after 65 or 70 years of 
really being aware extraterrestrials were coming here, especially when we started setting up nuclear bombs in our own atmosphere. They still have never retaliated after trying to be shot down or shot at or killed or captured by people on this earth. Sick behavior. People on earth know it's not right. They knew it all along, they couldn't help themselves. So this thing we call disclosure is not being done or taking place because of the governments of this planet. I wanna make this really clear to everybody on this planet because once they hear this, it's set up as a certain energy in the omnipresent living force that's in the entire creation to help them remember more about who they are. And this is underway, not just on Earth. There's an energy moving through our solar system now that cannot be reversed by any leader or any power on this planet. And it's moving one direction. So, Although the leaders of Earth on their own initiative would not disclose and continue to deceive and lie to people, for they think there's a good reason, something else is going to disclose this planet's people with or without their consent, because their non-compliance would destroy this world, period. No, no other result could result from it. So either they sit back and do nothing, the Earth blows itself up, all these greedy men, these a fearful, power-driven men ruin the whole world and it starts over. Or something else moves in to change it because the people who think they have free will to make decisions based on fear are not utilizing true free will at all. That's not free will. They're being run by subconscious programs. That's not freedom. This is important. There are certain people on this earth being prepared, who I work with and others do when they're out of their bodies at night, who have great power, great money. And they're being shown clearly, unmistakably, that some of the way they're using money, even small parts of it could be redirected to help change this planet, including themselves. That's incredibly important because until money is no longer necessary, it needs to be utilized to employ people, hire thousands of people, for in my case, to make feature film projects happen based on books I have out there. I'm not concerned about money, like it's hard to get or that it's valuable because it isn't. There's no gold or silver or diamonds or valuable metals behind any currency on the earth that I know of anymore. So people are just brainwashed to use it. All it is is digits in a computer. That's it. If I want to pay the people at Boeing with digits in a computer, government sends them a bunch of digits. They send digits to their bank accounts. They can get some small cash out and go buy food. And everybody accepts it, right? That's fine. But they're being, they're being controlled by it. Um, and this includes the people in power as well. It's like they get caught in their own lie so long they don't know to tell the difference between what's real and what isn't anymore. Fear rules their decision making. And that always creates destruction. It always backfires every single time, without exception. To get over that, to change that, this planet is going to have to work with beings from other worlds who have long since learned how to stop this, who've developed the technology to unpollute a polluted planet, to provide for what you call free energy, to take care of sewage and things and turn it molecularly into other products, to change a planetary system on an environmental scale worldwide is old, easy, ancient technology for beings that could come here and do this for us at no cost or charge. Fear and paranoia is the only thing in the way now. That's it, nothing else. No one's ever come back and retaliated when they caught a little gray or killed him in a laboratory or wouldn't let him go. These people don't stop to realize this planet could have been annihilated, taken over and dominated in 10 minutes from one of the lesser advanced races out among the stars. 
if they've been allowed to do it. And I'm talking about tyrant races. There are very few that travel the stars. And they are being carefully quarantined, shall we say. This Earth and our solar system is quarantined right now. This cabal, this hidden government people, the top people know this. It's nothing their technology can do to change it. It's quarantined because they are not going to allow people on this world to play out among the stars fighting each other for the spoils of other people's planets. Space is already occupied, mostly by more advanced races. Most of them are kind and would share with us. There have been people come to this earth to offer this to this, the people on this planet, governments, and they've been turned down many times. Could have been forced on them. It may still take place in a way that compels. Let's just say that what is underway now not only cannot be reversed, but disclosure will take place whether they do it voluntarily and tell the people or not. This is underway. So if leaders want to look like they're good to their people, they're going to have to grow up, drop fear, start trusting some friends from out of town, from off world, and start incorporating the realization of their existence to the rest of the people on this planet for the good of everyone. There is no other way for this planet to survive the next few years. There isn't. I want to make sure that I put this message out because no one else is. And it has to be done. Scott, I think it is a very good start for everyone to know who they, why they're stuck on planet Earth without memories. You know, I think they should read your book, The Series Agenda, and then there are techniques, you know, that they can, they can use it to help them remember. We've said this before. I'm glad you brought it up, Perry. But the series agenda and how it came into existence on this planet, how it was written. I had first written the Parallel Time Trilogy, The Emerald Doorway, Gardens of the Ancient One, and Journey to the Center of the Universe. This is more about extraterrestrial involvement in an ancient past people do not know or can't remember. A little over 100,000 years ago is all. What happened in our solar system? how beings got evolved with what beings were from other worlds in secret on this planet back then, prior to the last polar shift. And it has to do with, it has to do with more of the history that's tied to right now today, involving life from other worlds, very advanced, very kind. Also some bad guys too, that were out there. The series agenda is about what's taking place now out in the universe. That never happened before. Something's changing in the consciousness of those people. I first met Ambassador Torellian when I was writing the Series Agenda book because I realized I needed to start to put down what I was experiencing with beings from other worlds and master teachers from other worlds, travels to higher dimensions, even across what people call the void, into the higher realities. I was doing this for much of my life. And in the later years, all of this coalesced into a focus. And then I was on an experience on a planet near the center of this galaxy, witnessing Ambassador Torellian of the Say Race, who's 18 feet tall in the body form he shows people, doing something with a book to change the consciousness of 5,000 council members that actually represent almost 500 million spacefaring worlds in parallel dimensions. They move between them in their technology, not just like going to the Venus. If you go to a higher Venus and a higher parallel dimension by changing the molecular time rate of the molecules of the craft through a, a toroidal field around the craft, you become part of another reality. And there are people there. And Earth does not have the right and will never have the right to blow this place up and radiate it and affect life out there. We do not have that right as a bunch of unconscious people bumping into each other, doing everything from fear. We don't have the right. Beings from other worlds outnumber us a billion to one. Our vote wouldn't count. 
We don't have the right to be abusive. We don't have the right for China and Russia and the United States to go out and compete for the spoils of space. It's absurd. It will never take place. Never. Because space is not only already occupied, but this solar system, because of how dangerous people on Earth are, has been quarantined. People here will not be allowed to go out and play among the stars faster than the speed of light in their own craft until they grow up, until they can accept help from outside and get this planet right. Because it isn't, it is as wrong as it can get right now. So we're going to be required to step up and grow up without destroying ourselves. Not because of what people on earth would do collectively in mass. They'll destroy themselves. Because other beings will step in. Not to take our free will away, but to keep us from doing stupid things that would harm other life we don't even know exists yet. This is, can't be allowed. So this system is quarantined. There's people in the classified community who know it full well. So the process of what we call disclosure is now underway through the Pentagon in the United States. They've started to do it very slowly, very nervous about it, but they're doing it. And if they don't speed up their little, get off their asses, it'll sweep through this planet and be done overnight. And they'll look like pretty bad cookies for having lied to everybody about everything without telling them the truth when this happens. So they know they have a deadline and they know they have to get on it. This is for their good. It's for the good of their families. No one's going to be shot and executed and tried. But I can tell you, that their consciousness, the subconscious things that influence them in a negative way, that's going to go bye-bye. They don't have a right to keep making decisions based on stuff they don't even know is influencing them. That's not free will. Okay, enough said on that. It's important. Yes, and I want to point out, because we on earth we have so many fears you know from maybe so many lifetimes by reading your books i i mean from my experience from your trilogy book the guardians of the ancient one the chapter of cave of fears god i think that is very good technique cave of fears uh -huh. not being very clear that is a chapter in the book yeah 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 the chapter in the book from the guardians of the ancient one that's the second book in the trilogy yeah. It's a special place that three key characters in these books, Kayla, Melina, and Etta, who is not human, are taken out of their bodies and put into a, a testing, a kind of training to evolve them much more quickly. They are made to confront their worst nightmare, their worst fear, and conquer it or perish. And they weren't put through the test by the masters who put them through it unless they were sure they would make it through. And of course, they probably wouldn't have let them perish anyway. But they passed the test, all three of them, in the Cave of Fears, to prepare them to have the ability to defend or to um, battle with a very evil being, and in their end result, win. Because this being would have destroyed Earth today, as we know it, would have destroyed lots of things. So it tells the story of how this went down right up to present time on Earth. Then the Ceres agenda takes it from present time out into the universe and up into the higher realities to a degree. Most of the work I do in private with you, Perry, and a few others is not yet publicly made known. It's not on YouTube. It's not in my promotional videos on my YouTube channel. It's not even in the books except the hue, the first of the word human what it does and why it is, is in those books, but not where we go and how we travel on these journeys. That's more of a private training or a uh, by demonstration kind of workshop training I may get into someday here when enough people are dropped enough fear to make it worthwhile doing it because this work is not based on charging people for money. It's not like what other people are doing here. It will at some point be probably made available for people to donate, but it's not right to have people that have barely anything who want to get better to send their last pennies to me. 
There are wealthy people that are changing that can do that, provide the income that's necessary for me to start the feature film productions, to do a lot of things, hire thousands of people and expand a, a publishing company. That's easy stuff. There are people in the world somewhere right now, particularly one or two that have been working at night out of their bodies. That no, they're just getting the courage up to come forward because their donation of funds to this work would be a tiny smidgen of what they have. And it will actually benefit them to get free of the trap they're in. They know they're in on this planet. There is a reciprocal thing that goes on with that. If they want Maya or illusion and being born in bodies unconsciously to end and not be crapped by money and power and things and wake up to who they are that isn't the body they're running, this is the way for them. Yes, Scott, let, let me get back to this. Yes. Okay. Bring this out on this video. Who knows who will see it or who won't? But I can tell you that this is being put out telepathically, that it's psychic. It's a pure form of communication in the omnipresent living force between beings. It cannot be penetrated by any negative nature or weapons or anything else. And it's being put out to the people of this planet for their bene uplifting benefit. I have no other motivation than that. Now I'm done. <laughs> yes, I want to go back to your second book from Trilogy, Guardians of the Ancient Ones, the part, the chapter, Cave of Fears. That, I think, is very, very useful with me, the experience, because Kellen, Melina, and Eta, when they have fears and how they solve the problem, how they get out of fears, you know. It's, I think it's a very good technique, you know, if people who are in fears want to know how to get rid of control fears should read this book, you know, but you should read the whole trilogy books, you know, not only one to get to understand. Of course they should, otherwise they're not going to get it. Yeah. It's important to work with the techniques at the back of the Sarah's Agenda book. Think about this. These books were published as in two categories, openly revealing this to the whole world. I don't have any excuses for it. I did this deliberately. It's published in a nonfiction category, which I have a right to do. UFOs, extraterrestrials, um, what is it? Uh, body, mind, spirit, UFO, extraterrestrials. Covers a broad area. And fiction as action adventure. Because they are action adventure. And they're written to portray what took place with certain beings. And they're very high action adventure. Um, these books have a glossary of characters and terms in the back, very difficult to do in any book. The Emerald Doorway has over 30, just on, the Emerald Doorway has 30 illustrations, very fine illustrations of key characters, both human and non-human, in it, published in it. If my own publishing had, company hadn't put it out, no publisher on earth would have ever spent the money to do that unless I was a New York Times beyond bestseller. So I had to do this anyway through my own publishing company, Total Spectrum Publishing. Total Spectrum, funny, huh? Yes, this is the series of Daniel yeah. that we were talking. And this is the Emerald Doorway. So people can remember when they want to buy online. Now, show them the next two, please, as well. <laughs> Can you show them? Because I, I keep in another place, sorry. This is Guardians of the Ancient One. This is Etta. This is Master Ramu, Captain Kalem, Melina. And this is a moron. It's kind of a nasty creature that Kalem experiences in the Cave of Fears. And it has his own fear. But these people are courageous. That's not the fear they confront. It's a a primordial fear that goes back billions of years they have to confront and conquer. Each of these books have a glossary of characters and terms in the back. No books put out in these categories have those that I know of. This is the third book, Journey to the Center of the Universe. That's Sendar. He's a bad guy. He's human. He has great occult powers. This is Melina. 
swimming under the ocean on planet Oceana going down towards a domed city. That is a shaft of light into which a big spectrum ship can move to enter the ocean to these cities or go up into space. You're going to find this out. They all have glossaries of characters and terms, and the Sabres Agenda has special technique section in the back, quite extensive. There's a special technique for the prologue and one for each of the 29 chapters. It is amazing, Scott. Some people wrote to me that they read your books, right? And then they could remember the they were born in the time in the Zon period, you know, from the trilogy book, you know. They I mean amazing. So if you want to really know, remember your about your life and who you are, I would highly recommend to read all four books from Scott Landwell, you know, and the way you put it, Scott. <laughs> Very good. I don't know how many people on earth actually see your videos outside of Thailand. Some, certainly, we know that. We have experience of people seeing your, you know, um, um, what was the what, Awaken Hidden Truth was the way you originally called it. Now it's Adventures Beyond Earth, Fun and Adventure Beyond Earth. Fun Beyond Earth, yes. Okay. In order for this work, to take its next step. Now that all the books are published, all four of them, in another week or so, I will have the ebook published for Journey to the Center of the Universe. Last night, Guardians of the Ancient One ebook ebook was published. So they're working on the third one, and then there'll be a hardback, paperback, and ebooks for anybody in the world. The same illustrations are even in the ebook in the Emerald Doorway. The techniques are in the series agenda. The glossary of character and terms are even in the ebooks. So no one will be deprived anything by getting any one of those. I do sell books because otherwise I could never work with print-on-demand facilities around the world through Amazon or Ingram Spark that distributes to bookstores and no one could get them. I don't have print-on-demand facilities where I live to print books and ship things. It would cost 60 bucks or more to ship one pound book to Germany from the US. It can't be done. So print-on-demand facilities have been built in these locales by these companies to print them locally and ship them locally. That's what print-on-demand means. They don't store them in warehouses anymore. I think the last person they did that for was J.K. Rowling. Harry Potter phenomenon was so big, they had to print all these books, store them in warehouses, wait for the opening day in stores, and then ship them out because they all sold. Okay? It was a, a big phenomena, but that's very rarely done. Next step for this work is to have one or two people come out of the woodwork who know who they are to get in touch with me about promoting, supporting this work. Because to take these books and make them beyond New York Times bestsellers for the benefit of the people, and I mean benefit in the military industrial complex, I don't care if it's hidden government, it doesn't matter. It's more universal. This is from off world. It's for this planet's change, for its survival. I'm not kidding about this stuff. I don't have time to waste. So that's the next step for this work. Because you've got to hire a lot of people who need to buy bread and support their families. If you're going to get on a high level of promoting this like a very powerful publishing company would, if they were really behind someone then they can get this advertising out. Feature film studios can get advertising out on a world basis that the internet can't. Still, this is true to this day. So there is a whole way for this to unfold that has been set up, deliberately set up to unfold in a certain series of steps. Not done selfishly, done for the benefit of the survival of this planet. That's it. Uh, and it has its own destiny. So I don't worry about money. I don't worry about nuclear war because they can't use them. They've tried in the past. Their launch computers were shut down from space. This is not something to shove aside. This is something that's history on this planet that people were not told. This is part of disclosure. 
It is coming out. I can, yes, I can share to people that by reading Scott's books, you know, four books, I have so many experience, many wonderful experiences and to remember more about who I am, you know, and why I'm here on earth without memories. I have to thank to you, Scott. I have to thank to our master beings, you know, who are involved in his work. You know, these are master beings, the rest of people on earth right now, people listening who may cross paths with this video, don't know exist. They aren't masters in the history of the little history they know for 10,000 years on this planet. They're way beyond anything that's been introduced to this world so far. And most of the real master teachers that came here were killed or left, weren't from this planet anyway. Sooner or later, this is all going to come to a focal point. And this planet's heading right into the middle of an energy that's moving through our solar system. It cannot be avoided. Yes, talking about energy, I think uh, we are into this enlightenment, enlightenment path, right? So we know everything is energy. What I want to share with you too is this book is energy to every single word in this. You know, it's like it will, t it will bring you back to help you to remember who you are. This has come from my true experience that I want to share with all of you. Get his books, you know, start reading today. So start your process to remember who you are. Wait a minute. Let's clarify some things, too. If you don't read English, it won't matter. Many of the people in Thailand that have made this a bestseller in a big bookstore in Bangkok, as far as I know, right. these books, is a Japanese-owned bookstore, lots of chains, lots of books that could go back to Japan and proliferate from there. I don't know. But people in Thai, because Perry and I have conducted hotel meetings that she sets up in Thailand, there could be 60 to 90 people or so, and I take them on a journey out of their body, outside Earth's atmosphere, on these journeys. And those are published videos on live, online. And because they don't speak or read English, most of them, I will say something in a very balanced way, and Perry will translate it into Thai. But I take them on journeys this way. So that kind of work is another aspect of why I'm here. The books are their own entity, but they serve as a kind of doorway, an energy doorway of pure energy from the omnipresent living force that supports all creation. People call it divine spirit without really knowing how to relate with it, co-create with it, because they don't really know what it is on earth. They can, they have the potential to really understand it, but to do that, they have to have direct experience. They need to remember who they are as a being, not a body, first. So much of my work takes place further than what's revealed in the books. But the books provide a series of steps in a staircase that help people have their own direct experience of remembering who they are until they become more confident in their own knowing. This means they have to learn how to drop fear. It is required. OK. And so it needs to be people's own experience for them yes. to understand what it is you're sharing with them. Yes, and to get experience reading his books. I mean, me and many people, you know, by reading uh, his book and and connecting with you. So many, many people, your know, Thai people, they send me many messages, you know, to tell me, to share with me how, how many experiences they have, you know, and how much they could remember more about their life and why they are stuck here on Earth. And we all have to thank Scott again and our master beings. I'm serious, Scott. Well, I really mean it. When you say it, you understand it, but the people you're speaking to don't know about these master beings, who they are, what they are. It needs to become their direct experience, too. Yes, you started yes. out when we first met, not knowing any of this. Correct. And then you had more experience, and now you know for yourself. This is a big difference in a person's life. Mm -hmm. Faith is a good place to start, but a terrible place to end up. And I'm not trying to be insulting any religion or putting any religion down. I don't do that. But it should lead to direct experience about what people believe in. I don't mean just believing, really having conscious experience. Because that is what changes consciousness. That's what makes a person enlightened. 
There are two elements that I work with with people. Well, there's no money from Mayan being charged for it yet on this planet. And that is self-realization is a term used in some esoteric or spiritual circles. It simply means awakening, knowing what you are that isn't a body. Never was and never will be. It's spherically shaped. It is non-nuclear, non-atomic. It is not molecules. It's not atoms. It's more like the energy that's in between all things in space. That whole black area where little galaxies float in it, that's actually a brilliant white golden light to a being when they're out of their body seeing it as the being, not the body. Because physical eyes of the genetics of people on Earth can't see into that high of frequency, so it appears black. Scientists today on Earth know it's not black. It's powerful energy. They called it dark matter for a long time. Now they're not even calling it that. They're calling it zero point or toroidal energy, the energy of the universe. That's correct. In present time on Earth, that's correct. It's a right understanding. But working with it, having experience with it, having technology that interfaces with it, this is where people on Earth lack terribly because they don't understand the energy that surrounds this planet. They haven't a clue. So I think it's time for people on Earth to start recovering the awareness of this. They have the ability. They just need to lose the fear and gain the confidence to look where they're afraid to look. They're always protected and they always have help. When I go on these, these things I do, part of this radio show we're calling it that we do has to do with me serving as a guide to assist people to, to put their body in the trance state called sleep. Same thing they do every night all over the world anyway, like masters. How hard is it for you to put your body to sleep at night, Perry? You well, see. <laughs> okay, but here's what people aren't aware of because of fear. They're afraid to bring back to this life of negativity, this turmoil in this world, what they experience when they're out of their body at night. Some people call it a lucid dream. That is someone that's labeled something they don't understand yet. It's lucid, meaning it seems more real than here. They're calling it a dream because they don't yet understand that the person having such experiences isn't in the body having them. The body is kept on automatic. Bodies do not run themselves. The atma, what beings from other worlds call, what people call soul on earth, is spherically shaped like a planet, a moon, or a sun, which is why those things are shaped like they are, because they are created in the image of their creators or creator, round. The being that runs a body through the mechanism of the pineal gland, the center of a human brain, connects an energy to it that makes it run or the heart and stops, the body falls down dead. Brains do not run themselves. When a baby is born and breathes, the being starts to run that body. It's a genetic entity until then. Sometimes beings can get in the womb and get out of it during pregnancy, but when it's born and breathes, that being starts to run that body for that lifetime. They still are not the body they're running. If people on earth understood this and were taught this growing up, whatever religion they are, they would be so enlightened, this place would be a paradise. Mm -hmm. Like many worlds are out in space that travel among the stars. They are not like earth. Many people in power are afraid to tell the rest of the people what they know that extraterrestrials are out there and coming here, monitoring us, observing us for our own good. But we would have blown ourselves up already if they had not intervened. They don't want to run governments here. Who'd want that stupid job? They do keep us from having nuclear war, and they have so far. Will they do it again if someone launches nuclear weapons? Well, that's up to them, isn't it? Can they shut down launch computers or make nuclear warheads not work? Yes, in a heartbeat. And the people in these governments know it damn well. Yet they threaten everybody with nuclear weapons. I have no fear of nuclear war on this planet. I know better. 
I mean none, because they can't use them. They've been sitting around rusting bomb cases for 60 years. Why? Because people are operating and making decisions based on fear. That's the only reason why. There is no other reason. That's it. So what would it be like for people on earth to be free of fear? Hmm? What kind of decisions would leaders make if they had no fear? Hmm? Hmm. Simple. Well, I work with the first half of the word human. By the way, the languages you experience on earth are not native to this planet, like you're taught in school, incorrectly. They may have changed over thousands of years, but they didn't originate here. No race on this planet originated on this planet. Not African American, not Caucasian, not Asian, not Chinese, not Japanese, not Muslim, not Semitic, not Aboriginal tribes, not Indian tribes, none of them. They represent entire types of human races and other star systems that were brought here at one time or another over the last 65 million years. There have been races and higher civilizations on this world that have been destroyed overnight. When the poles of this planet, planet would flip over, this ocean, the mantle would rise up from the sea floor and other continents would sink to counterbalance. That's been going on for some time. Recently, that was permanently stopped, but not by people on Earth. People used to speak of going from a golden age to an iron age back to a golden age through these cycles of progressively more negative cultures. That's over for this planet. People don't even know it. Religions don't know it. That's been stopped. You gotta play out in the universe in the higher realities to know how that came about. And it's done by beings that are so much more advanced than what you'd call a master teacher. They are beings who run the mechanics of creation maintain galaxies spinning on their axis, moons going around planets, planets going around suns, creating a toroidal field, a gravitational field. So they float in this energy, this non-nuclear, non-atomic, powerful energy. They float in it. And the key to interdimensional and space travel is in knowing how to work with that energy that's between all things that float in it, period. End of story. That's it. Zero point, toroidal energy. Governments know about it and they classify it. They don't want people to know about it because they're afraid of it. They know there are races that use it really well and have for millions of years. They want to somehow develop weaponry so they can defend themselves against these very advanced races if push comes to shove and they turn out to be bad guys. That's what their thinking is like. It's wrong thinking. There's nothing right about it whatsoever. It's just misdirected. There's been no evidence ever on this planet that some race from the stars has tried to take this planet over. Some infiltration has happened by negative beings from the stars here in the past, but they didn't take over this planet. That was stopped, but not by people on Earth. Get it? We didn't stop that. We didn't remove the nuclear radiation coming to the Pacific Northwest from Fukushima. It disappeared from the ocean one day, just poof, gone. Our military didn't do that. No one on earth did that. Nobody attacked anybody. You'd think that after this many years, people in power now would begin to understand. They're going to make treaties. They better make it with the right people, because if they make it with tyrants, which they did originally, they're going to be in trouble because they're going to be misused and deceived and played with like toys and thrown away or killed or eaten. So something had to come along to get them out of their misdirected thinking, especially after World War II. That was already done. That's accomplished. It's not in the future. It's over. There are no more abductions by little greys on this planet ever, anywhere, ever anymore. Nobody's talking about that on Coast to Coast AM or anything else because they don't know yet. That's part of deeper disclosure. 
I'm bringing it out in the world because it's coming our way anyway. I work with the first half of the word hue because it is a secret vibrational way to connect with the toroidal or zero point energy divine spirit that holds the entire universe up directly by each person. All it does is it begins a process of the atma running the body to recover, remembering who and what it is that is not a body. That's part of the first process. Certain amount of subconscious fear has to be dropped for that to happen. There is no other way. You cannot mix fear with divine consciousness. You cannot mix fear and call it love. You cannot mix fear and self-righteously say your faith is better than anybody else's. Fear and truth do not mix ever not at all there's no way to make decisions on a planetary basis based on fear and call it good because it isn't and it never will be there is a basic law of physics every action creates an equal and opposite reaction in space time in molecules and matter in atomic and nuclear energy yes this is true it's what people call karma Maya, illusion, because when people put out negativity, it brings back to them the same result as a teacher. If people want to stop that nonsense, they have to start working with an energy that is not reactive in space-time. They need to start working with the one power in the universe. And then karma and reincarnation come to a permanent end. I've just said something very profound, very important here. It's not my truth. It comes from the source behind all life itself. I go there. I experience it. I know. This is not some kind of ego trip to put me on a pedestal, become somebody's master teacher. No. I'm here as a guide to help people become their own master teacher. So they start to do what they're meant to do being proper custodians and caretakers of the lower dimensions of time and space, including planet Earth. That's why we exist. That's part of it. So let's go into the hue. We'll go on a little trip just outside the planet's atmosphere, no further. I've taken people all the way into the upper realities, other planets, even to Zetronami 1, which is a planet. It's four times bigger than Earth. It has no polar ice caps. It has three planets the size of Earth circling it. No polar ice caps. They circle three suns. It's a trinary star system. Big blue-white giant, yellow sun like ours, much bigger, and a red dwarf. And these planets circle it. There's a reason there's no polar ice caps in a trinary sun system. The way that human beings evolve on that world and beings that come there, human and humanoid and others, as part of the Galactic Alliance Council there. The energy that's created on such a world provides for a very swift evolution gen genetically for beings like humans, and they're much more evolved, human genomes and gen DNA on those worlds and those beings than people on Earth. They're not tyrants. They work collectively together of free will. They've learned to do away with negative fear and other things long ago. They've already approached certain people on earth and governments to say, we want to bring this here. And the fear that these people are run with subconsciously, they always say no because they're trying to develop enough weaponry to defend themselves from such beings. They're never going to do that. Not now, not 10,000 years from now. We're too far behind them in this regard. It's not possible. Laser weapons, forget about them. That's child's play. If they were tyrants, we would already be governed by another race from the stars. This has not happened. People on Earth should start to ask themselves, why? Do we really think we deserve to rule ourselves being so diabolically negative and fear-ridden? People claim they love each other. They think they love. 
Love is respect for all life. There is no nothing else that even resembles what love is than that. People aren't practicing that because they're afraid to. That's it. Nothing else. And it can be solved very simply. When they work with the hue, which we're about to do, they make a connection with that toroidal energy, the zero-point energy, divine spirit, whatever they want to call it, the living force that sustains and supports everything. Not just out in the physical universe. It goes up through higher dimensions, too. They're all real, more real than here. I would ask people to simply be seated, close their eyes, or lie down comfortably. Then imagine someone or something they love and respect. They're grateful a bit. Whatever that is, is in their life. Person, place, or thing. But it has to be genuine. This is all that's required. When I start sending out the hue, I would request that you do your own your own comfortable pitch out loud or silently in your consciousness inside. And I'm going to take these tones up higher to create a bridge through higher realities. And the first place we're going to go, which naturally will happen when you listen to my voice, because this is a telepathic function. It is not psychic. No, I'm not putting down psychics. Psychic energy comes from the lower dimensions of time and space. It is positive and negative, blend of both or one or the other. The pure communication energy, telepathic energy, is through the hue, which is not made of nuclear or atomic material. It is not negative and positive. It is pure positive. It is the energy behind all other energy. So something opens like a doorway in the pineal gland, the center of the brain, and it connects to the spherical being you are hovering above your body or near it right now, even if you do not know this. And then the first thing you become aware of is see yourself. This is just daydreaming, folks, just daydreaming. Everybody on earth can daydream. They do it without effort. You imagine going to the store. You go down, you get in your car and turn the key and go to the store. But you don't go to the store if you don't first imagine it. Imagination is not something that's made up with your brain. Your brain does not imagine anything. That's not its purpose. When you imagine something and you're looking through your eyes, you are seeing that somewhere else, that someplace else, from the spherical being you are, the Atma or soul. People are not taught this growing up, so they have no reality on it when they're adults. What a shame that is. So you become aware, and I would ask you to see yourself just through daydreaming. Simply imagine looking down at your body from the ceiling. Sitting there comfortably, breathing normally. Eyes closed. Why do we close the eyes to shut off any light input from the physical world of Earth? The atmosphere of Earth is saturated with negative energy, imagination, deeds done, and is still bouncing off the ionosphere, trapped in this atmosphere, since life began on this planet. Unfortunately, people are picking up on past negative things done and living them out in present time. When people think or imagine something, it goes out in a micro frequency measurable on an oscilloscope, and it goes out and affects the atmosphere, but it does not leave the atmosphere of Earth. When people come to realize this, they will begin to make great progress in deliberately choosing to only utilize their creative imagination of uplifting beneficial new ways. Just imagine what your body would look like if you were at the ceiling looking down on it. It's easy. You daydream all the time without effort, so why should this be any effort? You're going to find that your body is in a trance state called sleep. This doesn't mean you won't hear sounds outside through your ears. It's a safety mechanism. But actually, the body goes to sleep. This is why when you're deeply asleep and snoring, you don't hear anybody outside you. 
because no one is home. The body is run through an energy link between the atma, what you are, and the pineal gland. It is given energy to run on automatic when you leave it at night, when you go to sleep. We're simply making the transition to do this while you're alert and awake. Out of body travel indeed. Most of you are out of your bodies and don't even know it. I'll begin these tones and then we'll go further. You. First half of the word human. The first word behind all creation is this sound. It is the first sound that brought all the multidimensional creation into existence. What each and every being is running a body comes from the source behind all life, and it is comprised of the same energy in the same similar appearance as the source itself. It's spherical. Human bodies were not made in the image of what people call God. That's the body, the genetic entity that a being runs. Beings, the Atma soul, were made in the image of that. And that's spherical or round. And it has a shape and a structure. It has a white core. It has a layer of teardrop shaped lights and a yellow layer. Then it extends into another layer in concentric circles from yellow to orange to green to blue to lavender, to violet, to a golden energy field around it. These all have functional characteristics. So you're up near the ceiling. You actually look like that. When we go on this journey, you'll be able to see this in others who go on this journey with us because you'll be able to see each other outside of Earth's atmosphere in this way. This is easy stuff. You 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 I do this, other fellow co-creative associates, wondrous beings, some master teachers, people from the Galactic Alliance itself, join me in this, waiting for us out in space, above and outside of planet Earth's atmosphere, for a reason. It sets up a field of protective energy, and we go into a circle of this energy, It is not nuclear or atomic. Nothing of any negative nature in or out of bodies or technology can penetrate this energy. Can't even see us or it when we're doing it. Imagine yourself being at upper atmosphere of the planet. Looking down all the way on your, through your roof at your body, And you can see that you are a spherical being hovering near the ceiling. And you realize you are also hovering way up near the upper atmosphere, both places simultaneously because you are an atma. You are soul, you are spherical, and you are a multidimensional capable being. 
You can even see right through your roof and see your body there like you have a telephoto lens. When you look to each side of you, you'll see a man and a woman, beautiful, about 36, standing there, smiling at you, beautifully dressed, not from earth, long hair. And you'll see a spherical being hovering above the body forms they're showing you. They look to be about 36 years old. And then you suddenly realize that you are looking at a body that looks like you, and it's about 36 years old. Perfect, flawless, healthy, trim, everything. And you are smiling back at these two beings. These are guides. And all they're doing is to make sure that your usual subconscious drives, fear, is turned off and kept turned off while you're on this journey so you can make real progress. Now imagine yourself being out in space up above the atmosphere of Earth at a distance so that you can see the planet Earth. You've all seen it in Hubble Space Telescope images. There's the poles, the polar ice caps, the beautiful oceans, the land masses, the moon circling Earth that's barren without atmosphere, meteor craters all over it. It does not turn on its axis as it circles the planet. It always shows Earth citizens the same face, which makes it so easy to put a classified base on the backside of the moon, which they've done so that it cannot be viewed or detected from astronomical or radio telescopes from Earth. Duh. There have been two space programs in existence, especially after World War II. One was NASA. The other was classified and was not given as information to the public. This is still true today. When you're out in space, you find that you are in a circle of beings. Perry, you can see her. She's nearby me over to the left. I'm over to the right. And there's a friend. He is a human appearing being. His name is Ambassador Torellian. He is of the Seyrez race, thus the title of the Seyrez Agenda book. He's 18 foot tall, so he's much taller than us. He's showing you a very handsome 36 year old Greek like God person with slightly wavy blonde hair, big, beautiful crystal and blue eyes, trim, fit, bare feet. He's standing there with his two hands out with his thumbs up with a golden white energy around them. And he has brought that here from a much higher reality. And it extends out in a field of a sphere of energy around all of us. We are like individual planets circling this being. You know, stationary, just looking at him. And he has a quirky little smile on his face. He is a man of few words. He's showing you a body that was immortalized over one billion Earth years ago out in another galaxy. He's not even from the Milky Way. So all human natures, DNA, and body evolutions all over the galaxy originally sprang from the Say rays. They were very tall. He's showing you a body that he's mocked up meaning that he's drawn energy from the omnipresent hue that surrounds us and taken a DNA pattern stored in, stored in the yellow area of his, the atma hovering above this body form. And he simply formed molecules around it, but of a pure energy, type of energy. So it looks like a real physical body. You could touch it. You're doing the same thing. You're showing each other what you look like in your true form, physical form you would project from the Atma or soul that gives you a way to identify each other and recognize each other anywhere in the universe. The Say rays were responsible for seeding higher genetic forms throughout not just this galaxy, Andromeda and many others in a history so far back it isn't even brought to the attention of people on Earth at this point. 
the Galactic Interdimensional Alliance of Free Worlds, located on Zetronami 1 near the center of the Milky Way galaxy, has not even been brought to light through the UFO and extraterrestrial communities or disclosed to anyone yet, except through this work, because it is time to do that. So I met Torellian in the later half of writing the Sayre's Agenda book. I experienced him directly, and we have been fond friends, collaborators, co-creators since. I watched while he first met with the Galactic Alliance Council. No one had seen a say raise in almost a billion years. They departed their presence in this galaxy for a while to see what the races they had helped develop, the atmas that came in and started running these higher human and other forms, they brought them up to spacefaring capability and then left, vanished. They have returned. They say that they're not pleased with what beings have done with things. Some worlds, yes. Earth, no. Of course not. The fact that they're even willing to intervene to help change things here instead of allowing us to be destroyed is a miracle in itself because previously they would not We have only one way to survive the misdirected nature of leaders on this planet. And that is to invite beings of a much higher evolution, kind and loving to come here and provide the technology and the awareness for us to change or life on this planet will come to an end again. This means in 65 million years, life in great abundance has been on this planet and destroyed quite a number of times. Since the dinosaurs were made extinct, beings like us could come to Earth during the last 65 million years. Where is the missing history? Not just solar system history, but galactic history. Everyone on Earth in the right conditions is capable of recalling and remembering all of this. They have to have awakened enough courage to take the risk to step forward to remember, to confront whatever they're most afraid of, because whatever happened to them is history. It cannot happen again, even if you've been told it will, if you ever try to remember. That's been stopped permanently out in the universe. There are reptilians going to come to this planet and eat you. They do not and are not allowed to enter this solar system. And those that were here, as few as they were, have been sent away not by us. Just knowing this alone for some people will be very liberating because they don't know it yet. And fear is keeping them from understanding it. No little grays abduct people on this planet anymore. The more than 25 years or longer since that occurred, why? Who stopped it? Not people on Earth can tell you that. So when I say this solar system is quarantined, it's for our own good. We're not going to be allowed to play among the stars until we grow up enough to play in nice ways with beings on other worlds because space is already occupied and we don't have the right to go and pilfer their worlds for resources or anything else. And we are never going to be given that right. This is a fact. We work with them, trade, sure we can trade. But they don't work with monetary systems. They're not interested in being paid in gold or silver for their technology. You could not acquire it that way. So out here in space, when you're hovering around Torellian, outside of the planet of Earth's atmosphere, Torellian is simply telepathically communicating with each of you just to say hello, to announce his presence, that he is a co-creator with me and I with him. There are other master teachers here, some of whom reside on Earth in a higher parallel dimension that have immortalized their physical bodies in a different way, meaning they don't age. 
all they've done is changed or turned on certain genomes on the DNA so the telomeres on the DNA do not shrink when the cells divide, and thus their bodies do not age. And those few master teachers who have done this didn't do it selfishly. They did it for a good purpose, to serve, to help out. Torellian's type of immortalization is much different and much more evolved. He does not have the burden of pushing a physical body around, feeding it, or having it go to the bathroom. He mocks it up when he needs it and stores it when he doesn't. Pretty neat, huh? All of you on this journey are telepathic beings. This means you have the ability to communicate consciousness to consciousness through the hue that is the energy between us all. When we're out here in space, there is no negative or positive nature as people think of it in terms of molecules. Because most of the energy of space is not nuclear at all. It is zero point toroidal energy, the energy of the universe, which is not nuclear or atomic in nature. It is finer than that, it is the energy behind such things. When you look around us, you can see a white golden field of light. It's not black. You can see it extends all around us between the earth and the moon and the sun between the billions of stars that make up the galaxy we call the Milky Way, you can see another galaxy from here. You have that ability called Andromeda, our nearest neighbor. When you look at the Milky Way galaxy, which we're going to do right now, you're gonna suddenly find that Torellian has moved us all high up above the Milky Way galaxy. So we're out in that black area of space, which is really a white golden light, looking down on the galactic core. All those billions of stars circling a galactic center, people call a black hole, is not black. It is a powerful, bright golden white light. It's a shaft of energy running up and down the center of it, around which everything spins. And there is a toroidal field like the gravitational field around Earth. It goes up out of the pole, circles around, comes in through the bottom of the entire galaxy. Such a field also exists around the planet Earth. The same type of field exists around you as the spherical atma hovering above your physical body. It's also surrounding this perfect 36-year-old physical body you have standing in space. You don't need to breathe. You don't feel heat or cold. You don't get affected by radiation from the sun. Back on Earth, if you're lying down or sitting, that body is also surrounded with a toroidal field, electromagnetic field. People call it the aura without understanding what it is or what it really looks like. There's a toroidal field around the earth. There's a one around you as a being and one around your body, one around the entire galaxy. That shaft of light in the middle of the galaxy we're looking down on connects to a higher parallel dimension through the center of an even bigger galaxy in a higher parallel dimension. And then it goes up to another parallel dimension. Then it goes up to what people call the astral plane, the first major division. There are many great divisions above that. All emotion that you experience on earth comes from a life you're living right there in the astral plane. In other words, you're running more than one physical body at one time as a single atma without knowing it. There is fear between your remembering that and acquiring knowing certainty. My work has to do with helping people recover knowing certainty. Look out in space. Look down, you can see the whole Milky Way galaxy like a little thing below you and you're up in this huge energy field. You look out to the left, you see Andromeda. You look in the distance, you see, oh, there's millions of galaxies out there. When you look down on the center of the Milky Way galaxy, you suddenly realize that Torellian and all of us are moving like planets around the sun very swiftly until we come to hover above outer space above a big planet. We are near the galactic core of the Milky Way galaxy, not in it, near it. And we are looking at a planet 
beautiful continents, all, little continents all over it, oceans between them, no polar ice caps, it's four times bigger than Earth. And you can see three planets circling it. The size of Earth, beautiful. Dome cities on it, pyramid structures, all kinds of neat things. No pollution whatsoever on these worlds. Three of those planets circle this bigger parent planet. And that planet and those moons circle a trinary sun system. You can see it in the distance. Big, giant, blue-white star, a young, bright, white, hot star. And out further circling it, a yellow sun like ours. And out further circling both of them, what's called a red dwarf. And you look down in the atmosphere, this pinkish blue atmosphere, and you realize we're suddenly hovering above a white dome. Looks like moonstone, clear, semi-transparent actually. But it's a long dome curved and there's beautiful landscape ground around it, exotic tropical trees. And out in the distance, the glow of a blue green ocean, luminous with a mineral in it that glows in a golden sandy beach. And you're looking down on this dome and there are pyramid structures and octagonal structures and uh, square structures with view windows in them, but they're very carefully and sparsely placed. Most of it is trees and gardens, fountains and walkways. You'll see pads here and there and you'll see what's called the Galactic Alliance Scout class ship parked on them. We go down inside this dome, Torellian moves down through it, and we go right through it. We pass right through whatever matter makes it up. And we're hovering near the top of a Colosseum-sized dome. And down inside are 15 levels, concentrically bigger, of white leather-like seats that circle on 15 levels. And down in the center, down below, is a circular blue disc stage. And Torellian is standing on it with his two thumbs out, a golden light around him, and us hovering in a circle up near the ceiling. And you look down and you can see men and women in white kind of robes with a sash golden from the right shoulder to the left hip. And they stand to greet us with their right hand up. And you can see that they are human, humanoid, non-human, but they are emitting a very pleasant energy. This is the Galactic Alliance Council. There are over 5,000 of them, and each one represents a massive number of space-faring world systems. They work in harmony together here from this central governing planet. They oversee planetary systems in just a little under one half of our galaxy. Earth people will become aware of them soon enough. And Torellian is simply showing you a book under his right arm. Takes it out and opens it and it hovers in the air. It's like four feet wide. It looks like it's made of some kind of blue-gray metal pages. And on it are these letters like hieroglyphic Egyptian symbols moving like fire letters across the page, both sides. You cannot read it this way. But the energy of the wisdom contained in it can be transmitted into you if you have the courage to receive it. This all has to do with you remembering who and what you are. So you'd see a little beam of energy come into the white core of your being and down into the top of your head. Remember, you have a body that looks like you, perfect energy, flawless, and it brightens it. The book closes and vanishes. And the next instant, you find yourself hovering around Torellian, looking down on the ice caps of planet Earth. He nods and vanishes. The next instant, you find yourself at 10,000 feet in the atmosphere of Earth. And you look to the left and right, and there's a man and a woman smiling, still there from the Galactic Alliance. They're master teachers, very benevolent. And then you look down and realize you are hovering near the ceiling, looking at your body back on Earth. All you're doing now is endeavoring with what effort you can muster 
to bring the awareness of this journey back into the consciousness, not of your brain, it can't contain it, but into the field of energy that surrounds your body, the toroidal field, and it's stored there. It also goes, you can see that it's, you're putting it out into the field of energy that surrounds you as the atmosphere, the ceiling, and it is stored there. And then the, this golden white energy comes through the core of your being, through the pineal gland, the center of the head of your body that's asleep, and it goes out into the earth planet. And it goes on from there to three pyramids that have been built and been manifested, two at the bottom of Earth's deepest oceans and one inside a hollowed out interior of a mountain in the Himalayas. And it goes into a fountain in those, and then it's beamed out into a bigger pyramid that's stationed between two stable asteroids in the asteroid field that circles in the orbit of a planet in our solar system between Mars and Jupiter. And then it's beamed out to bigger pyramids that are now stationed between individual stars across the galaxy. And it moves until it connects with the shaft of white golden light, the center of the galactic core we visited, and it's sent upward all the way back to the source behind all life. So be kind to yourself in the form you call a body on earth that you are running because you are not that body. And when you're ready, open your eyes. Thank you, Scott. Each time when I come back from the journey, I am in serenity, feel very calm. I think people are looking for using the creative imagination, which as I mentioned, is not from the brain. It's their ability to see into other realities. Just imagine it. You wanna be in Hawaii, look what it's like to be there. You can't get to Hawaii unless you imagine it and get on a plane and go there on earth. But you can imagine being on another planet or in another reality and actually be there as the pure being you are and observe it and learn and grow from it. When people discover this great truth on earth and have some confidence with it, this place will be a paradise. I wanted to share that with everyone. Is there, there was a question I think you had from- Yes, yes, I, I get on the question from Tim, okay. Uh, he said, I get confused when you talk about the etheric plane as being the highest plane that is below the, the void. You seem to place it above the physical, astral, mental, mental, mental and causal planes. A lot of classic Hindu and Western esoteric writing talk about the etheric plane as being just above the physical realm, but below the astral plane, the relate it to Prana, why do you place it above the mental and causal planes? Because that's where it is. This is the reason that people stay stuck on earth because what they're being taught is upside down and backwards. And it keeps them stuck here because they, that isn't the way it works. Etheric is much something that means something almost transparent. It's very fine matter, very little negativity mixed with it of the positive and negative, the duality, like the yin and yang. They're supposed to be working together, circling each other with a golden energy around them so you can manifest positive and negative in harmony. People have been split in their consciousness so that they think and imagine negative things and positive things. They're in conflict and it grounds their energy to the earth because their consciousness is split in half. The true formula is to bring those two together and imagine something that's of a lifting benefit for all life, not just life on earth. That won't do it. You got to embrace a bigger God than that, or you're going to be stuck here. So you have a physical world. The physical universe has 144 parallel dimensions of universes. It's just big. And there's a barrier. And then there's what's called the astral plane, where all emotion comes from that we experience on Earth. And there's a causal plane. Cause and effect is taught there. People learn how to affect things and understand that what they put out comes back. In the mental plane, everything is manifested instantly through what people call thought, which is really imagination. The etheric is the upper end of the mental, but it's really an area that's more purified. And although it's not flawless, it has very little negativity mixed with things and beings that live there. Then there's a void. 
People are taught there's nothing beyond the void because that's how the people that they listen to taught them. This is not true at all. If you can't imagine going above it, you never will. But if you can, you find that it's a barrier between what's called the pure positive upper dimensions, which have no negative and positive. They aren't matter worlds. They're not atomic or nuclear. And the worlds that are from the etheric down to the physical. If you want to go into the upper worlds, you have to at least have a guide or some way of imagining or remembering what it looks like to be there because you originally came from there. Mm -hmm. Just to be recalled and fear has to be moved out of the way or you can't recall it. It's a negative energy. You can't use it both ways. And then there are many higher realities above that, all the way up to what we call the ocean of sound and light, source, prime creator, 10th plane, way above the void. And there are two more higher than that. It's not taught on earth at all anywhere because they didn't exist up there until a few year, earth years ago maybe nine. So the universe is changing and evolving in a certain way that it has never done before, which makes it possible for people like you and others to advance very quickly. In the past, it's taken a master teacher to train a person through many lives to get them out of this mess. This is no longer the case, fortunately. I hope that answers that person's question. The point isn't what I say, or what he believes or she believes, is what they experience for themselves that changes their consciousness, not belief. That won't do it. Okay? Yes, one more question, please. Can you explain why the silent mentors allow Earth and humanity to continue existing past 2012? I heard that we were supposed to have a pole shift or pole reversal at that time. Mm -hmm. And we would have. There are beings who we have not, and rightly so, not introduced on this journey, and certainly not just to put out information on the internet for people to go, oh, they're silent mentors. They won't understand the first thing about it, wouldn't do them a damn bit of good, not any. There are beings who actually exist that run the mechanics of creation. This means they keep a galaxy floating. Beings do this. They keep it spinning around a vortex, a toroidal field that creates a gravitational, it floats in this energy, just like Earth does, the moon or the sun, the planets and the stars. The polar shifts that took place on this planet regularly for some time that wiped out all life here, and this planet had to be recolonized from numbers of races from the stars going back 65 million years. We didn't have a polar shift in 2012 because they've been permanently ended. They asked me to tell them the truth, I'm doing it. I don't care if they believe it or not. What matters is that they have the courage in their own convictions, in their own being, to drop in a fear and go forward to find out for themselves what is or is not true. There is no other way for a being to gain back the confidence they've lost. To experience what this is or how this happened, you'd have to have an association with beings called silent mentors. They're far more advanced than what you would call a master or master teacher. They have not been involved in uh, training individual beings like us or being involved with us in hundreds of billions of years. Their function has been entirely separate to maintain the doorways between dimensions, the doorways between galaxies, planets floating in space, moving on an axis, toroidal field, gravitational field, moving around suns, the nuclear rate, uh, explosive nature of suns and how they do what they do. They keep all that running and in place. They don't have anything to do with good and evil. They don't have anything to do with the, the stupid, misdirected things people on earth do with fear to justify abuses to all life. Just fear does that. It distorts their ability to see clearly. 
it warps their ability to understand what to choose to do every time. Couldn't do otherwise. They don't have anything to do with that, but they did recently, and I won't get into it, they can read more about that in the Sayre's agenda. Why did the polls get stopped permanently? Which means no more golden age to iron age and back again. That's done for this planet. Or we'd all be gone right now. We wouldn't be having this conversation. I hope that helps. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much for today. Thank very you. nice. Thank you, Perry, for having the courage to do this with me for quite a few number of years now. I think three. Why? <laughs> Good thing I have a neck or my head would float away. You know, it's like that. Okay, thank you, Scott, and thank you everyone for watching. Can get uh, Scott's book from Amazon and can get through your website too, right? Yeah, but basically Amazon. The books are also shipped from Ingram Spark to bookstores. So if they can't get them on Amazon, you can go to it from a bookstore and they can get it, even in Thailand. So um, when Perry puts this up, I'll put links to my websites, my YouTube channel, so people can explore this. There's no charge for going to them. There's no shopping cart at my websites. You have to go to Amazon to get a book, and there's links provided for that. So what is revealed at the websites is free of any charge. Okay, go visit the website, okay, and get the books to read, or if you are more con or more comfortable, can buy from ebooks too, right now it is available. But don't worry, if you can't read the language, put it under your pillow at night. A lot of Thai people have done this and are gaining benefits, right, Perry? Yes, and uh, there's uh, some people, Thai people asking, how about ebook can they put, because they download in that well, template. I guess they could put their phone or their iPad or their book ebook reader under a pillow. I book is better, I think. But yeah, they if they know it's restored on their phone or iPad, yeah, they could do that. It still work. It's still a channel. Yeah, actually, I have ebooks and then I buy the books too. You know, because like uh, can be a uh, souvenir too. I like it. I like the design. <laughs> okay, so I want to say something to all of you who may cross paths with this video or because it's not up on our YouTube channel yet. It's pre-recorded, but it will be up there tonight or tomorrow. And if you see it, try to go forward with enough courage to explore what's been revealed here tonight to you. Because then it's going to become your own experience, and then gradually you become the knower, not the believer, the knower. There's a big difference. I will say see you all lighter. Thank you, Perry. See you. Bye.